Uh, did you know that the Bible, I'm going to just remind you of a couple of things, the Bible talks more about money than it does heaven or hell. You understand that, right? You, you get all these things, you've heard my sermons, you've been with me for a few years now, every January I try to teach on stewardship and all this good stuff. And so, but I just want to talk to you, I'm not going to talk a lot about money this morning, I'm going to talk about your heart because it's a heart issue, all right? But I do because I get, I get these questions all the time, and rightfully so as a pastor. What do I believe about the tithe? Is the tithe uh, appropriate? A tithe is appropriate. Someone said, well, he, didn't, he doesn't talk about it. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He, he talks about it in the New Testament. Matter of fact, if you want to get real technical, Jesus said, I didn't come to do away with the law, but to fulfill the law, to take the law to the fullest level. So you say, well, do you tithe? I tithe. I really do. I tithe. Well, our family tithes. A matter of fact, this last year, uh, we're not going to talk about numbers, and I do not know what you give unless you tell me what you give. I do not ask. I don't ask every week who give what. I, I don't. I don't I, that's, that's between you and God, okay? There are other staff members that keep up with those things and take care of it. But you say, do you tithe? We tithe. I, I believe, you listening to me, say amen. amen. I believe the Bible is very clear from the very beginning of the Bible, even in, 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 the, in the realm of, of where the tithe was instituted to Melchizedek, which is a typology of Christ, all right, was a type of Christ in the Old Testament, that you should give a 10% of your first fruit. So when, when and I get asked, so I'm just going to get all this out of the way, and we're going to get to what I really want to talk about this morning, is your heart. We give 10% of our gross, all right? You ever look at your check and, and, and you see it says gross and it says net, all right? I believe the gross is the first fruit, all right? I believe that I, I should tithe. Again, you don't have to believe like me. I'm just answering your questions that you've asked me, and some of you have answered them already, but I'm going to ask them again. We believe that we should tithe on our first fruit, so we give off of our gross. I also believe, I also believe the Bible teaches that first fruit that I give, I believe the tithe is the train wheels, I believe the tithe is just a training wheel, all right? I believe it's just it something that he instituted to get you to a place that you understood that you could trust God with everything, and we'll get there in the sermon. But we tithe off our gross. I live in such a crazy realm of belief that everything I get, even gifts, if somebody gives me a gift, if I don't give that whole gift away, now, don't be put off by that. Continue to give me gifts. I love you. If you give me a gift, I get a gift. If you give me a gift, I at least tithe off of it. Most of the time, and I've tried to share stories with you because I want you to understand when you give to me, it's because you did it out of obedience. Or you maybe you feel bad about something. I don't know. <laughs> no, you did it out of obedience. And then I turn around, if I if I give it away, it's not to offend you, because what you did was between you and God. When I give it away, it's because God's told me to give it away. And I've told you this before. I, I'm not in a place where I just automatically go shoo, shoo, and give it away. No, I told you a few, it might even been a month ago, I struggled. Someone give me $100, and as soon as they give me that $100, I knew within just, I'm talking about a couple hours of that gift, I knew I was supposed to give that away. But I didn't. And it wasn't because I, I didn't want to give it away, it was just, I was, I, it's just something, and that's why it's a heart issue. It's just something that's attached between that government green and my heart. It just, every time I go to give it, it's like a tug, tug. And so I, I didn't, but then God got super convicted, ended up giving it, and man, it come back twofold. And it's not that that's what it's about, it's just that's how it works. And so that's how we run our house. And again, last year was, was probably, the, the, and I'm telling you, you listening to me, I promise you this. I bring home $500 a week. You, you pay me. The church, you don't pay me. God pays me. Make sure I get that correct. I bring on $500 a week. And, and so if you do the math, all right, on how much that is for a year, that's not a lot of money, right? And that's not a poor mouth. I don't want it. I've never asked for a raise since we launched the church. I've I didn't even ask for the money, all right? They've taken care of me, and that's it. And I hadn't had a raise in years, a, a couple years, and I don't. I don't, I don't it's not, not what this is about. What I'm trying to tell you is if I told you how much we, we gave, and she, she's on a teacher's salary, all right? Once a month, and good Lord, this stretch to this month's Amen. paycheck whoa, was a rough stretch after Christmas, man, all right? Yeah, rough, man, rough. For those of you who get paid once a month, or in, in, a lot of your teachers. But I'm trying to tell you, if you look at the math, all right, if you do the math, what we gave, I promise you, we do not make that in a year, all right? But it's because God has told us this is how we're to do it. And every year we try to go up by a percent. All right? That's how we run our household. So that's how I approach finances. Okay? Now, to get to your money, God's got to go through your heart. Because right? he's not just going to get your wallet. Because I've heard it. I've been doing this for nearly 20 years. I've heard people say, when I, well, when I get a little bit more, I, I'll give it. No, if you won't give five, you won't give 50. I'm telling you, I just know that. I just know that. If you won't, if you won't help me set up the cook line, you're not going to help me. In, you, I'm just telling you, that's how it works. And I get it, and I'm not judging you. I just want you to understand that by faith, you've got to start somewhere and give. Whether it's a dollar, five dollars, fifty bucks, five hundred dollars, or you want to give us five hundred thousand, then we can go and buy the land and put the building up. I, I would love that, okay? All right? 
you got to start somewhere. But to get there, he's got to go through your heart. As a matter of fact, A.W. Tozer said this. He said, the, at the root of the Christian life lies belief in the invisible. All right? The object of the Christian's faith is unseen reality. Here's why we struggle so much with giving and being people of generosity. We see stuff in the physical realm. And I've tried to teach you this, especially in the last bit, that you and I, especially like New Year's resolutions and all the commitments, we do everything in the physical. We're so caught up in the physical, and we don't understand that you and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ, and everything that happens in the physical has already transpired in the spiritual. We just got to get in connection with the spiritual. Some of you go, whoa, man, this is getting trippy, hippie for me. And I'm just telling you, that's how God works. It's I've got to believe in what I can't see. I, I walk by faith and not by sight. I've got to trust him that, listen, I don't give it to get it. I, I, don't, I, I disagree with that whole, whole concept. I give to give. The more I give, the more he gives me to give. That's just how it works. And along the process, I'm blessed. And, and so what Tozer is saying is I've got to get you to a place that you believe in the unseen, that our life is built bas basically and on the most part of the things that we cannot see. Now, to develop a heart of generosity, I want to take you all the way back for a few minutes to Deuteronomy when he starts to institute this giving. Deuteronomy chapter 15, they'll be on the screen. I'm going to read verses 7 through 11, and then I'm going to jump down to verse uh, 15 of chapter 15, all right? So they're on the screen. Here, here's, what, here's what he's saying. The Lord has given them commands. He says, if there is among you a poor man or your brethren within any of the gates in your land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not harden your heart nor shut your hand from your poor brother. But you shall open your hand wide to him and willingly, it's just this, this, this freedom, willingly lend him sufficient for his need, whatever he needs. Verse 9. Beware, least, li listen to these words, least there be a wicked thought in your heart, saying, the seventh year, the year of release is at hand, and your, eyes be e your eye be evil against your poor brother, and you give him nothing. And he cries out to the Lord against you, and it becomes sin among you. So it starts, you see how it works? It starts here with this thought and ends up into this sin, all right? That's how it works. It starts here and it works out into our hands and becomes this sin act. And so he says, don't, don't let that happen. Verse 10, you shall surely give to him and your heart should not be grieved. You want to note that word, grieved, when you give to him because for the things the Lord your God will bless you in, all your Lord God will bless you in all your works and in all to which you put your hand. Verse 11, for the poor will never cease from the land. Therefore I command you, saying, You shall open your hand wide to your brother, to your poor and your needy in your land. Verse 15. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore I command you this thing today. I don't want you to think about money. I want you to think about giving. Now, I know that when we talk about giving, you put equal sign money. We're not talking about money necessarily. Money is one aspect of it, okay? I've already told you, the Bible's clear about uh, tithing. The Bible's clear about offering. The, the Bible's clear about saving. The Bible's clear about working for your money. Uh, the Bible's very, very clear about those things. But I want, you to talk, I want to talk to you again about your heart and understand what he's talking about here. And I want you to develop a heart of generosity. Now... What, what first comes to my mind is that last year, and I, I said this Sunday, I'll say it again, I'll probably keep, you'd give nearly $16,000 to this community last year. I'm talking about this church that started with maybe $1,200 that first, that first day we opened the checking account. It was a little over $1,000. Don't know how, I don't have a clue how it got there uh, because on our way it was just a few hundred dollars to open the account. Along the way someone actually gave, and, and to this day I don't know who, but we opened with more. All right? You heard all the numbers a couple weeks ago. You guys are doing awesome and rocking. You guys are setting aside money you've committed and pledged to give to the new land and to the first building that we'll put on that, that structure, on that, on that uh, land. You guys are in full-fledged. I mean, you're, you're rocking and rolling. And I, I can't help but think about that. And here's, here's, the, here's what the reality is. There's always a small percentage that are doing work. What if all of us got into this realm that we understood this heart of generosity? That we would just give freely of all of ourselves, okay? And so to develop that, we've got to start with this. First one is this, if you take notes. Deal with a selfish heart. Verse 9. 
you got to deal with a selfish heart. He says, beware, lest there be a wicked thought in your heart, saying the seventh year, the year of release is at hand. Let me, let me set it in context, all right? Here in, in this, and this is how God set up the government uh, 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 economic system. Uh, and all in favor, he'd bring it back after you hear it. I, I think we'd all be in favor. Every seven years, it's called the year of Jubilee. Every seven year, or every seven year, everything, every debt, everything that was owed was wiped away. All right? And so when, I, I would like for him to reinstitute that, wouldn't you? <laughs> Especially student loans. Anyway, amen. And, uh, and so anyhow, so in the context of this dealing with, dealing with a selfish heart, here's two guys, okay? Now, I'm just, I'm just painting the word picture. It's, it's right there in the scripture, but let me just kind of put it in uh, Joelology or, 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 or a little bit of nearness, okay? All right, Can you, is that okay? It's two guys, all right? And the one guy, he, he, needs, he needs him, you know, to lend him some money. He's like, man, I'm, 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 I've, hit a, I've hit a hard patch. I'm, I'm down on my luck. I, 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 I need to borrow something. And the one guy's got sufficient, okay? And this verse of Scripture addresses the guy that's got sufficient. He, he goes, okay, well, I can give it to him. But then all of a sudden, all of a sudden in his mind, he remembers. Wait a minute. Just in a few months, well, it'll be the seventh year, and it's the year of release. So if I give him this money, and he don't pay me back in a few months, I can never get my money back. Now, you say, well, how does that equate to me and being selfish in my heart? Well, it, it's very simple. This part of us, it is what happens before we give. It, it, it's, it's saying, why should I give? If, if, if I give this, then I won't have for this. It, it, what am I going to get on my, and I've been told this too in the church, I, I, want, I, I want a return on my investment. In fact, you remember one day we, we met with somebody and they said, listen, I, if I'm, if I'm going to give you the money, and, 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 and let me tell you this very quickly, uh, I let them know very, 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 very quickly we didn't want their money. But do you remember he said, i got to have a drawn-out plan of how we're going to, I'm just not going to invest my money. I don't want anything to do with that. You see, this comes from a place, and, and I'm not judging them, I'm just saying this comes from a place of a selfish heart that says, well, if I give this, well, I won't get anything back for it. That's why I can't stand the give and get crowd. Well, if I give it, I'm going to get something back. You see, if you, if you start to buy into that, name it, claim it stuff, or if I give, he's going to return to me sevenfold or a hundredfold. Listen, it's not that he won't do that, but if you start doing it for that reason, I'm telling you, I promise you, as you do that, you begin to weave back in or sew back in selfishness because you begin to give thinking, well, what am I going to get? You understand? That's why I don't even like a church. I can't stand a church. Listen, I'm not, and I don't know, I'm not naming your church if it's your home church or your mamas or grandpappies. I can't stand the church that's got names on every pew or every windowsill. Holy smoke. I get it. I get you donated. Put a plaque somewhere. I get it. I understand that. But listen, that don't belong to you. Because what happens is, if you've ever been a part of a church that has this tradition, I promise you, it may be not that generation, but the next generation, they'll be like, well, my granddaddy give that. And we're going to do it like this around here. Well, now, what, what if God said do it different? Are you better than God? Well, I've had some tell me that they thought they were. Yeah. Well, if I was the pastor, you know, I'd tell them, i say, well, you ain't the pastor. I be the pastor, all right? And so that's, that's, this is what he's saying, and this is, is this developing a heart of generosity. First, you have to deal with a selfish heart. Let, let me ask you this. It was a question that was asked to seminary students. Why, why do you think God created giving? It was asked to this, to a, a group of seminary students. Why do you think God created giving? And the resounding answer probably would be the same as you would give, to support the work of the Lord. <clears throat> Rome. So let, let's put it in the, again, Joel, I'll just put it in this uh, uh, Milhelian vernacular. So you, you mean, do you think that God needs you to give so that because the power bill in heaven was a little bit greater this month? Or they've run out of gold on the, the left street or the fourth street or the third street? You, you think God needs your help to do those things? You see, I, I believe with all my heart, God created giving, not, not necessarily for Him at all, but for you and me, so that we understand we need Him. And the more I give and the more I understand this concept that I give Him my all, I need Him. That's why God created it. God created it so that I would understand I needed Him, and I wouldn't have selfishness in my life because selfishness leads to sinfulness in my life and works God out of the equation. Do you, you follow me this morning? I know it's not one of those happy, clappy, yay, woo! fire and brimstone I'm trying to teach you something if you're going to have a heart of generosity you got to deal with a selfish heart 
This happens before you give, and it works selfishness back into it. Just think about how God looks at that for those folks that say, if you give, you get. I, you think he's sitting up in heaven going, look. I said, look, all my people are finally catching the revelation of getting. You think he says that? They're finally catching the revelation of getting. No, I don't think it would be the other way around. They're finally catching the revelation of giving. So be very careful if you're going to develop a heart of generosity. We've got to deal with a selfish heart. Secondly, you've got to deal with a grieving heart. Verse 10, it says, you shall surely give to him, and your heart should not be grieved when you give to him, because for this thing the Lord your God will bless you in all your works and all which you put your hands to. All right? The, the, remember, that selfish heart, that happens before you give. All right? This part of it, it happens, well, it happens after you give. Crazy. I just, I said I wouldn't try to chase too many rabbits, but I just had this crazy thought. And that's how, that's how Satan works, right? <laughs> I just had this thought. Crazy about money. I'm thinking about going out to eat after church. And you know what I realized? I didn't bring any cash with me today. I don't, I don't have any cash to get anything to eat today. Isn't that crazy? I should know after nearly 20 years that I shouldn't be thinking about those things at all. I should not chase those things. Thank you. Are you? A hundred dollars? Brooke King? Holy smoke. That's what I'm saying. Maybe I need to start thinking these thoughts out more often. Holy smoke. I can, I can have this, right? This is good? Yeah? All right, I'm not taking you out to lunch, though. <laughs> no, let me, let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. She... Why do you think Brooke King, of all people, jumped up so quick to give me that $100? <laughs> because I give it to her before the service started. That's my $100, right? <laughs> now watch this. Watch this. Watch. She says she's going to give me a 10 back, but it's the 100 Watch this. Why do you think she jumped up so quick? She didn't grieve over that. You didn't grieve, did you? Why do you think she didn't grieve? It wasn't hers. Do you see? The reason you grieve after you give is because somewhere along the line you didn't deal with the selfishness and you think and thought that it actually belonged to you. How many times have you pledged or given something in a large amount, or said, I'm going to give more of my time, I'm going to commit to this, or, or let's just keep it financial, I'm going to give in this, and, you, and as soon as you leave, sometime this following week, your washing machine breaks. Refrigerator goes on the fritz. Wake up and the car won't crank. You see, you don't hear a lot of practical preaching nowadays. And too often we blame Satan for those things. Say, old devil, Could it possibly be that God is saying, were you serious? I mean, it looks good to give, but was you serious? And see, if you'll get to a place where you understand that nothing actually belongs to you, well, you'll get to a place that you're dealing with a grieving heart. And after you give, you won't have to walk away from saying, I, I don't know why. I pledge. I've heard of people that have committed to fa capital fundraising plans that once they realized they could not give or, or whatever the case may be, or they got into a situation, they'd leave, the, they'd leave the church. That's sad, man. I want you to know that if you pledged here to help us raise that, raise that, first, that first phase, that $500,000, and you get into a situation, hey, just don't give. Continue to tithe. Because, see, we didn't ask for your tithe. We asked for your offering, which is above your tithe. They go toward that. We won't judge you. I understand that completely. If you're going to develop a heart of generosity, if you're going to get into this, to this place where you give everything and realize this, you've got to deal with a selfish heart, you've got to deal with a grieving heart. Two more thoughts, and I promise you I'm done. I'm going to do them quickly. Third point, develop a generous heart. Verse 14, you shall supply him liberally from your flock, from your threshing floor, from your winepress, 
For what the Lord your God has blessed you with, you shall give to him. The Lord wants us to be generous, not selfish. We were born selfish, and God wants to cause us in our rebirth in salvation to be generous people. It is, it is the very first thing, if not second or third on the list, that you have to teach your child. Is that right? Is it amazing? It is amazing how you, you're, if you, it doesn't matter if your child is an only child and they have a friend over, and that friend, I don't care what age they are, if they're toddler and up, I guess. It is amazing. I would imagine even the pacifier would get pulled back. But I, I'd imagine that as they, as they begin, to, your, your kid is, it don't, <laughs> you say, well, my kid don't do wrong, man, I know better. <laughs> my kid's playing with this toy, but, but her friend, or his friend goes over and picks this toy up, but as soon as they pick that toy up, they drop this and go to this, and it's mine. It's amazing. I, I, listen, and, and, and Addie, uh, it, when, 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 when uh, uh, Lana become our daughter, and, and, and uh, it, it, it was great. And it's, that, it's still that way even, even, even at times now. Uh, it, things change. They're not necessarily a toy so much as it is maybe a hair product or a toothbrush this morning. Uh, yeah, little mama had to go back and find the picture at Christmas, which this toothbrush was given to you. And this goes, Lana, she, she, she thinks she's never wrong. And uh, Addie, she's stubborn like me, and so it, it causes a situation sometimes, right? Oh, you thought our, our family was perfect, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You got them back out of the trash because Mama threw them away, all right? And, and, and so this is, <laughs> they were still in the wrapper, don't you gross people? Uh, hey, <laughs> listen, it's one of the first things that we have to teach our kids to share. It's crazy. It's, it's crazy. This is mine. That's not yours. And God says, I want you to be a person of generosity. He said, out of your abundance, I want you to give. Now, someone, someone may have more, someone may have less, but out of your abundance, what God has blessed you with, you give. And, and what I'm trying to teach you is this in, this, in this illustration about our kids, is, it, it, and for some of you, uh, you, you'll learn quickly. And God, I wonder sometimes if he's not saying to us, I, I wish you would just grow up. I wish you'd just grow up. There's nothing. It, it, the Lord said, the earth in its fullness is mine. Everything belongs to the Lord. I understand that completely. The Lord gives and the Lord takes. And, and so if, if I'm going to have a heart, it's a heart of generosity, I've got to deal with some selfish things. I've got to deal with some things that I don't grieve. I just give. I just I give and I don't look back. I, I understand bad things are going to happen. It rains on the, uh, the, the just and the, and the unjust. I understand that. But I've got to a place where I'm going to give and I'm going to give generously. I, I want to grow up. And I am a lot further down the road than I was when I started. That's where I, that's where I am. And I, I'm accountable to, the, to, to some folks here in the church because if it wouldn't, if it, I'm, I'm being real with you, we wouldn't have any money in our savings account. Not that I'm more spiritual than them, I literally would give it all away. I have a hard time telling people no. I'll just be honest with you. Whether it's from this week buying a college book for a student that doesn't have the money to buy a college book, or last week paying somebody's rent that will be evicted the next day, or somebody's power bill that's going to be turned off that afternoon to make sure it gets taken care of you. So those are, those are very serious. I, I get it. But you do that every other week and it adds up. Fixing people's car, I'm just, I'm just being honest with you. And, and, I, and I tell you what, I get great joy out of that. I, I get great joy out of being able to bless someone. I, I get great joy out of watching my, and, 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 it, and here's the thing too, is that it's not only just money, it's of my time. I, I, I'll, get, I'll get a phone, and, and I, I'm not trying to pick on you guys, but I'll, I'll get a phone call or I'll get a message or say, hey, will you help me in this situation? And, and I'm, I'm like, yeah, I, I'll, I'll make sure my schedule will allow me, I'll help. And, and what a great blessing come out of that. I, I got asked last week, I, I will do my first wedding of the season next Friday. You'd think after all I did last season, I wouldn't do any for a while. I'm a sucker. I get great joy out of it. I get great joy. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even know you guys have had and did your wedding. Met in the gym, and then we, I mean, it's just, I, I, I'm saying, I want you to think it's just about money. It's, it's the heart. It's like saying, here I am, God. I want to give. I, I'm, I'm here. All that I have, all that I am, it's yours. It, it's developing that place of generosity in my life. It's saying that, God, I want to be generous with my heart. I want to grow up. I want to give. I want to understand that I, I give to give and not give to get, that I'm going to bless. And, I, and listen, my, my whole life has been like this. At, at age 23, when I got saved, if you were with me last Sunday, United, you heard stuff. Man, I shared stuff last Sunday. I, I, I've never told anybody about the guilt feeling I had over that situation when I was a young man. It felt like it was my fault. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I've, I've wasted so many years that I want to I spend the rest of my time giving as much as possible. That don't mean I don't fuss about it. That don't mean I don't grumble and complain. 
I don't mean I don't have my times that I'm saying, good Lord, that phone will not quit going off. How many times are they going to ask me? I've already told, I, I, I'm, I'm human, yes, but I want to get to a place where I give and I give and I give. Oswald Chambers said we ought to come to the end of every day and that we are a poured out drink offering. That everything that we've had, we've just poured out before the Lord. We've given everything we could give that day. You're going to do that, you've got to develop a generous heart. Lastly, you've got to develop a grateful heart. Verse 15. And I promise you I'm done, and I'll have you out here by 1130, like normal. Develop a grateful heart. Verse 15. You shall remember that you were a slave. That is, if the Holy Spirit don't move in the altar call. You shall remember that you were a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. Therefore, I command you this thing today. I command you to be generous. I command you. And that command for you to be generous is based off all that God has done for us. Do you understand? You read, it's a grateful heart. I'm generous because I'm grateful. I'm generous and I give of my time and my talent and my treasure because I'm grateful. I've never got over the fact that at age 23, he saved me from a hangover that morning. I'm, just, I'm talking about just absolutely headache hungover. And the music was super loud, by the way. I'm just being honest with you, all right? You're not Assembly of God. We were rocking out that day, all right? And if you were with me last week, you heard part of what are we saying to this? He says, listen, man, don't forget you at one time were a slave. You were in bondage. You didn't have anything. And, and I'm in a place in my life where I, I give and I, I, I'll, I'll go visit and I'll do funerals and I'll do weddings and I'll, I'll kiss babies and I'll love and I'll come pray and I'll bless your home. I, I get asked to come bless new homes. I, 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 whatever. I do my best to be at all those things. Why? I do FCA. There's sometimes Bradley, our executive pastor, will text me and remind me. and I'm going, oh, man, I didn't want to get up and go do that. But I do. I, I give these things. I want to do that because there was a time. I was a nothing and a nobody, and God gave me my life. God saved me from a drunken stupor. Do you understand all that God has done for you? And when you get to a place when you can look back over your life and see that God has done these things, that he's been faithful and that he has never left you nor forsaken you. I told you stories last week. I, I, I let you in on some things, man, crazy drug addict drunkard high school dropout I was in a room I was in a room one night in that room man I've told you this story before I believe I have I've shared it in different circles I'm in a room I, my brother and I show up to this place I sit down in a chair and the next thing you know I've got two 45s pointed at my chest fully loaded ready to blow me away I can tell you the times that we've gone out I, I was just telling someone the other day it is the stupidest thing in the world for someone to drink and drive that's the stupidest thing in the world First of all, to get drunk like that anyway, all right? Oh, that's too real for you, isn't it? You're looking for the bell of the church over yonder. I'm, I'm going to keep it real. I didn't say I, I, be of little wine, all right? You know how many times that I've been in the car upside down looking out going, how in the world am I going to live? I, I, I didn't tell you the time. Are you listening to me? I didn't tell you the time that I checked myself. I had someone bring me. I'd been up. You, you understand what causes you to be up? I'd been up more than eight days in a row. Begin to hallucinate. Someone brought something home, all right? You listen to me, students, how stupid I was and how I want you to avoid these things. Someone brought something home. I lived in, with a bunch of people, thought that was the coolest thing in the world. It was a flipping rat hole. They brought something home and said, if you'll take this, it'll help you go to sleep. So, hey, hey, well, yes, give it to Joel. It's like Mikey. He'll, he'll, take, he'll take anything. Give it to him. And I did. And the next thing I know, next thing I know, I wasn't asleep. I was, I mean, I'm literally, I could not get myself to get out of the spasm I was in. And so I have someone drive me down to the emergency room. I check myself in the emergency room, scared to death that I was dying. Next thing you know, they're, 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 they're pumping Benadryl in me. They're taking about all these things. And I hear someone in the other room. Are you listening to me? I hear someone in the other room. This is why I'm so generous. This is why I do what I do. This is why I am who I am. And how God has brought me to this place is I was once a slave to the things of this. And I ought not be here really technically. And I heard them in the other room, in the other triage room saying, listen, go get the, Paul, go, go get the police officer. He smells of alcohol. And literally, I, I mean, I panicked. I, I'd been on Benadryl. I took the stuff out of me. I walked myself completely out of there and began to walk up the highway. Do you understand that I'm not bragging on the sin in my life, but the reason I am the person that I am and that I'm so passionate with our students and you in your life, whether you poke me at the gym or you see me in Walmart, which won't happen that often if I can help it, Walmart part, all right? 
The reason is because I know all God has done for me. He's been faithful. And then we move to a place of salvation from all that stupidity. I go through several years of what looked like a perfect little family. I come home one day and nothing's there. Rotten food in the oven because they'd been partying it up. No bill had been paid in four months. Mortgage was behind. SUV payment, all the toys, everything we'd ever had was gone. Nearly $10,000 or $12,000, somewhere between eight and twelve. dollars Last time I looked at the count, every bit of it gone in the negative. All I had was $500 in my pocket from the revival I preached in that little mountain church. I found myself a single parent, four months behind on a mortgage and the SUV that hadn't been paid the payment in four months. I didn't know how in the world I'd preached for years. That's all I knew how to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. And start all over again. You think I give because just he says command you? No, I give because I once was a slave. I give because God has been good to me. He's given me my life. And so I don't just give him my 10%. I give him my all. Do you understand? I should be a statistic. I'm a rarity to even come to know Jesus. They say it by the time that a, a kid is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, they've already developed their thought processes of who they'll be and the decisions they'll make. It is a rarity for any kid over that age to come to faith in Jesus Christ. I've been watching for over nearly 20 years now. People absolutely blow that concept up because I am one of those guys that age 23 realized that I was dying and on my way to hell. You say, so why do you have a generous heart? Because it flows from a grateful heart. (laughs) Now some of you, you got a crew. And I don't know how you do it. We went from one kid to two kids. I don't know how we, I'm I'm telling you, if you look at what we gave last year financially. If you look at how much comes in our home. And I I mean, you can ask. I'm I'm an open book. It's okay, right? I mean, I've got nothing to hide. Because you'll see, you'll see it's the pot. Well, there's, there's a couple closed doors, and that's for me and Mama, okay? All right? That's none of your business. All right? And I hope you're that way with your family. But as far as that goes, you can look. And, here, and, and yes, it's tight, man. The last couple of weeks, he's, we, we, we've had to say, listen, you've got to be careful. I, I, you, you, are you with me? Are you with me? And I want you because I, I want a pity party, and I don't, I, don't, I don't want a handout, all right? Okay? Unless you just feel like God's broken your heart to give me. No. I'm talking about you couldn't even put gas in your car in the last couple of weeks. Heath asked, hey, I need you to meet me. I said, I hope I got enough to get there. I didn't ask anybody for anything. I would just text and say, hey, mama, can I use a debit card? And she said, yes or no. I'm talking about that tight. Anybody else know anything about that? <laughs> tight. But you know what? You listen to me. I'm, I'm telling you, because I, I don't want you to just think there's more. I'm going to leave one. Cause I, come on, band, let's go. Watch this. Watch this. I got your attention, right? Not a single meal has been missed. And I eat healthy. You, you understand me? My family's healthy. We, I, don't, I don't go just buy the cheap stuff off the shelf. And I'm not, not judging you because you do, all right? It, it wasn't a, wasn't a raw man to you this, okay? All right? <laughs> all right? Organic chick. Not a meal missed. It's been nice and warm in my house. Kids have clothes on their back, shoes on their feet, and they have no idea how tight it gets. I'm talking zero idea. You say, why? Because it's not their place in life yet to understand that. You say, how in the world? I can't do it other than God. I, I can't explain it, man. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. I can tell you these two things. I have have an audacious faith and a radical, ridiculous God. And I have a work ethic that's bar none. I will work circles around you. I will do everything I can to outdo everybody around me. I will do my best. Now, whether you like this or think this is a good principle or not, to be more of a help to someone than to ask somebody for help. You say, well, that's prideful. No, 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 no. No, no. There's been times I've come home and there's $1,000 in the mailbox when I first went through the divorce. I first got married and I lost my job. So I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to pastor. I wasn't going to do that anymore. I had to hide it high in the world. 
or we've overpaid on a power bill. You get those checks every now and then, that's, just, that's the nuttiest thing in the world. But it'll always meet a need. All I want you to do is get to a place where you understand that God wants you to give him everything. Not just 10%, not just money. Everything. Deal with the selfishness. Deal with the grief. Just give generously. And do it from a grateful place. Just think about where you've come from. Think about all that God has done for you. And how you hadn't even met him halfway yet. Can you imagine if you completely surrender all that he has in store for you and your family and your kids? If you'll just stop holding back. It's crazy how God works that way. Will you stand with me? Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you for being generous. There's nothing we can talk or teach about as ministers that, have, that cannot get around giving because, well, the very essence of who you are and who we are in you is the gift you give in Jesus Christ. And he gives us all. Help us to be generous people. Help us to start where we are. Stop waiting and stop holding back, but to give out of our generosity, out of our abundance, out of how you've blessed us. Now, as you keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed, the only place that starts is by giving your life to Jesus Christ. You'll never get to a place to get to your wallet. He's going to go through your heart. So you've got to give him your heart. So if you're in this place and you need Christ this morning, I want you to say something like this because it's based off the scripture, not an ABC prayer. The Bible's clear. You have to confess Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart that he was the son of God, that he lived a perfect life, that he died on Calvary's cross, that he was buried in a borrowed tomb, and on the third day that he come back to life supernaturally out of that tomb. If you will believe that by faith, he says that same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that supernatural Holy Ghost power will give you a new life right now. And all you got to do is ask for it. Jesus, save me. I don't understand it all. I'm not perfect. But I believe. And I want to do things your way. 